Hi friends and welcome to Book a Day for Little Learners. Friends, I continue our series on dinosaur books with the reading of Dinosaur Bob and his adventures with the family Lizardo. This book is by William Joyce. Friends, make sure you stick around all the way to the end and I will show you the story we will be reading tomorrow. If you aren't already a subscriber, I sure would appreciate your support of our channel by subscribing. And then if you hit that bell button, you will be notified every time we upload a new video, which as our YouTube channel says, is every day. Dinosaur Bob and His Adventures with the Family Lizardo by William Joyce. Every year before the start of the baseball season, the Lizardo family took a trip far from their home in Pimlico Hills. One afternoon while on safari in Africa, young Scotty Lizardo wandered away from camp. He returned with a dinosaur. Look what I caught, he said. Can we keep him? pleaded Scotty's sister Zelda and Velma. I don't see why not, said Dr. Lizardo. He looks kind of like my Uncle Bob, said Mrs. Lizardo. Jumba, their bodyguard, said nothing. Scotty patted the dinosaur on the nose. Bob, he tried. The dinosaur smiled and wagged his giant tail. So they named him Bob. With Bob along, safari life was fun. Swimming in the mornings, games of baseball in the afternoons, and songs by the campfire before bed. When it came time to start for home, the Lizardos couldn't stand the thought of leaving Bob behind. Would you like to come home with us, Bob? Asked Dr. Lizardo. We'd love to have you, said Mrs. Lizardo. You could play baseball for our home team, the Pimlico Pirates, cried Scotty, Zelda, and Velma. Bob smiled again and wagged his giant tail. Friends, would you take a dinosaur home as a pet? The journey back, I would not, friend. The journey back was grand. When the safari came to the banks of the River Nile, Dr. Lizardo said, let's go sailing. So they made Bob into a ship and steered him down the river. Not sure how I feel about that, friends. But they couldn't sail Bob all the way home to Pimlico Hills, so Dr. Lizardo booked passage on a luxury liner. A luxury liner is a cruise ship. Bob took us down the Nile in style, reasoned the doctor. It would be bad manners if we didn't return the favor. It was a wonderful voyage. Passengers danced the conga up and down Bob's back while he played his trumpet, a gift from the ship's orchestra. Every evening, the children led Bob up to his berth in the ship's smokestacks and brought him a little bedtime snack, two peanut butter and bologna sandwiches and 400 double Dutch chocolate cakes. Friends, would you like to try a peanut butter and bologna sandwich? I do not think it would be to my liking. How about 400 double Dutch chocolate cakes? Whew, that's a lot of cakes. When the ship reached New York City, the Lizardos visited Central Park. After a light snack of 750 hot dogs, they caught a train to Pimlico Hills. It was Bob's first train ride. Oh, look at him on the train. So they started their vacation in Africa and then they had to go back to the United States. So they, when they took a cruise liner home, that means they went across the Atlantic Ocean. Reporters flocked to the Lizardo house in Pimlico Hills. Bob will scare off burglars, Dr. Lizardo told them. And he can blow a mean trumpet, said Zelda. He can dance too, said Velma and Mrs. Lizardo at the same time. And can he play baseball, shouted Scotty. Jumba said nothing. The photographer's cameras flashed. Lengthy lizard lands with Lizardos, read the headline in the paper. Bob was famous. Friends, I think if you had a dinosaur as a pet, it would easily be famous. The next day, Bob and the Lizardos played some baseball in the backyard. Bob was terrific. He could play right and left field at the same time. <laughs> That's because he's so long. The Pimlico Pirates watched Bob play. The Pirates had never won a game. They were the worst team in history, but everyone in town loved them and went to all their games. I wish the big guy in green could play for us, said one of the Pirates. Do you think that dinosaur can play for the pirates? The following morning, Bob saw some neighborhood dogs chasing cars, so he decided to join them. 
He was stopped by a policeman. Aren't you the Lizardo's dinosaur? Bob nodded. He was arrested for disturbing the peace. So friends, one of the things about this story is that you can tell by the cars and what people are dressed like that this is not a story that would take place in current times, in modern day. Bob enjoyed being fingerprinted. He didn't understand he was in trouble. The Lazardos rushed to get Bob out of pres prison, but the chief of police wouldn't let him go. Ooh, why not? I'm sorry, the chief explained. We can't have dinosaurs running wild in the streets. We'll be sending him back to Africa in the morning. <gasps> Bob let out a sad howl. So did the Lazardos. Everyone, even the policemen, began to cry. <gasps> that is sad. I don't know if that's a good choice. That night, no one at the Lazardos' house could sleep. Poor Bob, said Scott, sighed Scotty. All alone, said Velma. Without his trumpet, said Zelda. Suddenly, Dr. Lazardo jumped up, grabbed his hat, and ran out the door. Don't worry, said Mrs. Lazardo. Your father never goes out in his pajamas unless he has a smashing idea. Soon, the doctor returned with the Pimlico pirates. Come on, he whispered, and be very quiet. I think I know how to save Bob. Bob's escape met, made headlines the following morning. Lazardo's and Lizard on the lamb. Cops confused. So being on the lam means that you have left where the cops thought they were going to be able to find you. The people of Pimlico Hills weren't worried. They were too busy thinking about the pirates opening game. The whole town was going that afternoon, even the chief of police. As the stadium filled, no one noticed a large bump in the outfield. The team began to run out onto the baseball diamond as the announcer called their names. When the last of the team was called, the announcer shouted, And now, the newest Pimlico Pirate, Dinosaur Bob! The bump began to move. There stood Bob. The crowd roared. So did the chief of police. Bob smiled, smiled his big dinosaur grin, and the game began. The game was close. The Lizardos cheered Bob from the dugout and gave him water between innings. The Pirates were playing better than they ever had. They needed just one run to win the game when Dinosaur Bob stepped up to bat. He swung with all his might, crack! The ball went up and up, clear out of the stadium and out of sight. Friends, when the ball goes out of the stadium and out of sight, that is a home run. He can round all three bases and go to home because nobody can get the ball. Bob rounded the bases in three great strides and touched his nose to home plate. The Pimlico Pirates had won the game. The Lazardos rushed onto the field and hugged Bob, and the crowd cheered Bob all the way to the Lazardos' house. The chief of police cheered the loudest. Bob was a hero. That evening, Bob and the Lizardos created, celebrated by having a cookout in the backyard. After dinner, Jumbu brought out the musical instruments. Scotty on bongos, Bob on trumpet, and everyone else on kazoos. Here's to Bob, said Dr. and Mrs. Lizardo. The best ball player, said Velma. The best pal, said Zelda. And the best dinosaur a family ever had, shouted Scotty. Jumbu smiled. And they all sang and danced into the late summer night. The end. And the baseball hat says Bob. Friends, Dinosaur Bob and his adventures with the family of Lizardo, is that a story that could really happen? No. So it's not something that could realistically happen. So it's fiction. It's just, it's false. It's something the author made up because we don't have dinosaurs living and so a family couldn't go on vacation and get a dinosaur as a pet. You could, in theory, do it with other animals, though. Friends, I hope you enjoyed this story about a family that goes on vacation and finds a dinosaur and brings the dinosaur back to their home with them. And then the problem they run into is that the dinosaur is going to be sent back to Africa by the police until the family figures out a way to get him, to get the dinosaur to be able to stay.
I hope you enjoyed our story. I hope you subscribe to our Book a Day for Little Learners channel, and I hope to see you tomorrow for our next book, which I told you I would show you if you stayed till the end. I want to be a great big dinosaur. So I will see you tomorrow for this story, friends. Until then.